Memories from the summers gone by. Sounds of the Tibetan singing bowls in Auroville. Well, this memory is from just before the virus was on the loose in the world. On a whim, I decided to go to Pondicherry, or rather Puducherry. These new names never really stick in my head. I always prefer Calcutta or Kolkata and Bombay over Mumbai. I like how the earlier names have a literary history to them. Anyway, talking more about that whim, we've all done it to escape our monotonous lives. It was just before these times we find ourselves in. We would just pack our bags for weekend getaways without even thinking a blink. The times when weekend getaways were still a thing. Oh, such a beautiful thing, my favorite things. You know, what else is beautiful? Sitting in a two by two flight. It always gives a sense of calm to me. I like when I'm going from the overexploited world to a world with lesser means and more beauty. I got down at the small Pondy airport and was welcomed with the warm winds blowing from the Bay of Bengal. I could just smell the sea around. I checked into the beach villa called Samarpan at the Serenity Beach. It was everything I needed at that moment and more. It had earthy tones and a liberating bohemian decor. The owners of that guest house, Donata and Stefano, welcomed me with some homemade hibiscus juice. I enjoyed sipping it while also sipping the view of the Bay of Bengal on a bamboo peat chair in the balcony of my studio. I kicked my feet up and leisurely heard the silence of the serenity beach between the crashes of the waves. Instinctively, I understood the meaning behind the name of the guest house. Samarpan. Surrender. That's what I have come here to do. Surrender myself to the ways of living in this erstwhile French colony of India, Pondicherry. By evening, I got to know Donata better. Like many other people I had read about, she too had an epiphany in a dream. She had a call from the mother, Mira Alfasa, a spiritual guru and a founder of Auroville. And on just a whim, Donata, an Italian woman, left her home and family to come to India and build the city of dreams, Auroville. Like most others who think of it as a hippie destination, I too had the same notion. But after this weekend and having delved into the lives of the Aurovillians, I understand now the vision with which it was built. To be a universal town, a town with the purpose to realize human unity above and beyond all means all the man-made distinctions of nationality, ethnicity, religion, and the likes. I and Donata had become friends in a matter of just four hours. We talked about philosophy, humanism, life in Italy, fascism, pizzas, and then some reality. I could gather that although she had surrendered her life in service of the mother's dream, she still longed to see her children back in Italy. And out of nowhere, she started humming, thinking of something. Mm Partigiano, portami via, 
Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 porta ciao, porta via, che mi sento di morire. I was already feeling that this trip too was going to change me forever. And it was working its magic. After eating the revered Tanto's pizza, the taste of which is still, by the way, holding me captive, she recommended that I go visit one of her friends who were into chakra balancing. I was quite intrigued by the whole concept of it and had even tried shabbily to do it with the help of some YouTube videos in the past. But when she offered, I jumped on it. This friend of hers was an Afro-French guy and stayed in the Oro model community. She gave a disclaimer, go on a local auto rickshaw, else you will never find it. You see, she was right. It was dark and there were no major signages to guide one there. And also, I think it was strategically hidden in the dense tropical evergreen forests of Oroville. The tall, mature bamboo trees were swaying to the breeze of the Bay of Bengal and breathing life into Oroville. It felt like Mother's Grace was still feeding the place. The bats perched in century-old banyan trees with hanging roots. It was a full moon night and the silver of moon made the red soil of the forest glitter dimly. Except my auto, there were only the seasoned Aurovillians who I think knew which forest trail to take and who knew where they were going were on the road. This part of Auroville had been snug away from the hungry eyes of the tourists. Upon stopping in the middle of nowhere in the forest, I was told that I had arrived. For a second, I thought that the auto guy had played some trick on me. But upon treading a little further, I saw what was an igloo-shaped house, a little below the ground level. It was rust-colored, the color of the soil of the forest, and had no electricity. I was a little dumbfounded, but a lot excited. I knocked at the door. It was answered in a while. A tall African-French guy dressed in black kurta pajama, came out into the silver and red dark night I was standing in. With his deep bass caramel voice, he said, Hey, you must be Donata's friend. I'm Andre. In my amusement, I replied in an ecstatic but sneaky voice, like someone was gonna hear us in the forest. Hi, I'm Achita. Looking at my expression, he complied and said, actually, we don't have an electricity connection here and we prefer it that way. He washed my feet with water, saying that it was some nice Indian thing that he had picked up while staying here. And then we went inside his small Oro igloo. It was lit up with candles and had all his apparatus for the evening, the Tibetan singing bowls of various depths and diameters right in the center of the igloo. The space was just right to live a minimalist's life or to live like how the seven dwarves lived. The most mesmerizing part of this igloo, the Oro igloo, was a large hole in the center of the igloo's dome. It was large enough to direct the light of the stars and the moon in that room. It was a full moon night outside and inside that igloo. There were seven other people in the room who had come for balancing their chakras, all from different countries, and had come to take the quintessential experience of the Aurovillian vision. 
After completing the Goram, Andre led us through what was a three-hour-long meditation. The space in the candlelit, moonlit igloo reverberated with the energies of our chants and danced with the cosmic energy in the room. The sounds of the bowls followed and Andre's deep caramel voice guided us to attract the life we always wanted to manifest. We did. Well, at least I did. I had reached some trance-like calm state. It felt like I was floating in the energies of the deep space, where I was absorbing the energies of a million stars. Stars that sparkled in pink and green and purple. It felt like somehow my conscience had expanded, like it had become light and pure just for a little while. But then, like all good things, the session ended. Upon reaching Samarpan, the beach house, late at night, I sat by the beach under the full moon and I kept that serenity alive. I had, in true sense, surrendered myself to the universe that night and only beauty came my way, all day. I try to tap the beauty, grace and spontaneity of that day by myself these days too, when we can't go out on our beloved weekend getaways. And then sometimes I just tell you about it instead. <laughs>